finding one's art style is a struggle that i think every single artist goes through during their journey sometimes even multiple times during their journey it's something that's very elusive and it's also something that we feel a lot of imposter syndrome with we look at a lot of other artists and we look at their work and there's a clear synergy with their work like there are so many artists whose work really can be identified as their own and we want to feel the same way about our own art but sometimes it just feels like we're a little all over the place and it's lacking that same synergy i've gone through that exact same struggle as well and in today's video as i celebrate the launch of my first ever art collection where i finally feel like i've reached somewhere when it comes to finding my own art style and being comfortable with it i want to share my own journey of getting there and the challenges i faced and what really helped me through that process to discover my style hi there welcome back to the channel and if you're new here then welcome to the channel my name is shivani and i'm a gouache artist and naturalist based in the sunny city of chennai in the south of india I've been painting with gouache for over 3 years now but I've been painting since my childhood. So finding my art style was something that I struggled with a lot in the beginning of my art journey especially over the last 2 years where I wanted to take this up professionally. I think one of the major struggles that I faced was that I was interested in a whole bunch of different things. Specifically I was painting in two completely different styles. uh even right at the beginning of last year i had started this youtube channel i was already teaching people how to paint with gouache but i still felt really uncomfortable in putting my own original art out there because it felt a little all over the place even if you look through the past videos on this channel you'll see that i have two completely different styles of painting which i have explored one is a very traditional ethnic indian art inspired style so i've painted in pichwai style kalamkari style mughal style all of that and i i bucket all of that into one genre and then there is naturalist art i got really fascinated with birds and butterflies and i've been painting them extensively over the last 2 years but again when i painted that that looked completely different from my ethnic indian art style so i was at a loss <laughs> on how to really marry these two things together i wasn't really sure what my own art style is and where i stand when it comes to all of this because it felt like i really enjoyed painting both of these things and how was i going to bring that together was something i could not answer at that point as we're discussing this i'm also playing some snippets from the painting of my new collection i managed to record parts of the process there are a total of 21 paintings in the collection so i managed to record some of them and i'm just playing that in the background as we speak about this so like i said today i have reached a point where i can kind of visually define what my art style is and i can define the kind of subjects that i'm drawn towards but it took me a lot to really reach this point in fact even when i had decided to paint this collection and i knew what my inspiration was and what the subjects were that i was going to paint i still didn't know what style i wanted to paint it in So I originally planned to create this collection in January but I gave myself a little extra time to kind of figure that out for myself because I wanted to feel really confident about what I was creating. So here are a few things I did that really helped me in this process. The first one is I chased my curiosities. I get that idea also from these two books by Austin Kleon which is Show Your Work and Steal Like an Artist. Both are great books that I think every artist should have in their library. They're great to refer to at any point of time. And I think chasing your curiosities was something um that I allowed myself to do. I wanted myself to feel free to create what I wanted to create with no pressure. I think a mistake that we all make is that we start boxing ourselves in a little too early and it gets really hard then for a style to emerge that you feel really good about. 
if you just decide that you want to box yourself into being a very specific kind of landscape artist, for example, just because you saw some other artists do that and you were attracted to it, you decided that that's where you want to be too and then you box yourself there, then you're going to find a lack of inspiration very soon. You're going to start painting in that style, you'll be able to explore it a little bit, but then you'll find that you run out of inspiration pretty soon because it won't feel 100% like you. And you really want that when you're finding your art style. So I say that it's good to chase your curiosities, even if it is going down two very different directions, which is exactly what I did. I went down the Indian ethnic art path, but I also went down this naturalist path. I didn't close myself off of either of them. And I just organically discovered that I liked painting one more than the other. And I ran out of ideas faster with one more than the other. I think that was a clear sign for me that this might be the direction that I want to take. And the other thing that happens when you chase your curiosities is happy accidents. So I definitely do think that even though maybe I don't paint exactly in an ethnic style right now, I do think that I am still heavily inspired by Mughal miniature art and their depictions of flora and fauna and the natural world. And I'm also very inspired by just vintage botanicals in general. Now, those discoveries would not have happened if I closed myself off too early and if I didn't allow myself to go down that path. In between all of this, I also started chasing loser brushwork and loser landscapes, even though landscapes really aren't my thing, but I was fascinated with it for a while. So I didn't close myself off. I allowed myself to explore that. And in the process, I developed beautiful brushwork, which now I'm able to bring into my naturalist paintings. The next thing that started happening is I started dancing with my moods. So I allowed myself to feel the way I was feeling when I was painting. And as I got a little more confident with who I wanted to be as an artist, I allowed myself to get more loose and more expressive with my brushwork. And I think that is another thing that really came through in my collection. I could not have ever imagined painting feathers the way I painted in this collection. It just happened organically because I allowed myself to be in a joyful space while I was creating it. I allowed my inspirations to kind of fuel me. And like I said, all of these practices and all of the art I had exposed myself to before this really came through when I actually started painting this collection. The next tip I have for you is to never stop learning. I don't think any artist has ever arrived. There is no final destination that we're all going to. Your art style is something that is constantly evolving every single day and you need to get comfortable with that. For example, I really love this book called Color and Light by James Gurney. And even though James Gurney's painting style is very different from my own, the way he explains color and light is just so beautiful and it informs so much of the art that I create. I enjoy just going through that book. I enjoy going through his YouTube videos and just learning from everything that he has to offer because he is an amazing artist and just exposing yourself to other artists' way of working, way of thinking, the way they pair colors together, all of it helps to inform your art. And don't ever think of that as copying. Everything is an amalgamation. Read Steel Like an Artist, like I said, because that will help cement that thought as well. Everything comes from somewhere and you need to allow yourself um, to soak in so many different inspirations from so many different places. And you'll find that your own unique mishmash of all of those things starts happening in your head. And hopefully that's what you're going to be able to translate into your art. The next thing that really helped me was daily practice. 
I will mention two things in this. The first is daily sketchbooking. I took up the 100 day project this year and I didn't end up completing the project because I had committed to 100 days of sketchbooking. But over the last couple of months, while I started painting my collection every single day, I really didn't have enough time to paint in my sketchbook and paint my collection. But I still counted it as a win because I was still painting every single day and that's mainly what I wanted to come out of this. And I am going to continue my 100 day project where I left off now that I'm done with my collection and it's launched into the world. But my point is that daily sketchbooking really helped me explore a lot more. I think that we often get too stuck in our own heads and until you actually put your paintbrush onto the paper, you're not going to see what's going to come out of you. And when you do that every single day consistently, and again, when you're chasing your curiosities in this form, your sketchbook is a really safe space for you to create anything you want to create. If you don't want to share it with the world, you don't have to share it with the world. That's completely up to you. So you can take this time every single day for yourself to explore and draw and paint and scribble whatever you feel like doing. And you're going to find if you give it enough time that you are going to start gravitating towards certain things. It could be certain colors that you like. It could be the way you move your brush, which is very unique to you. It could be the kind of brush marks you make. It could be the subjects that you're drawn to. And usually it's a combination of all of those things that forms your style. If you give yourself that commitment and if you give yourself that time to explore for yourself every single day, something magical is definitely going to happen at the end of it. And that's when I really got comfortable with my collection ideas. Before I started my daily sketchbooking practice, I already knew that I was going to create this collection in this naturalist style. In fact, I had already planned out my compositions. I had rough sketches in my sketchbook but I wasn't really able to get myself to start painting them. Once I did the daily sketchbooking and once I saw that I was able to paint birds with such grace and such, such elegance in a style that looked like it was becoming uniquely my own, I got really confident to start painting my collection. And the second thing I want to mention as a daily practice is morning pages. Morning pages is an idea that comes out of Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way. And I've spoken about this before as well in my video about 10 things that really helped my art practice. But I religiously write my morning pages every single day. And it's just another place for me to flesh out my ideas. I enjoy writing. So it's a really nice way for me to just throw things down, throw down ideas, talk about how I'm feeling, talk about anything. Sometimes I write about the ideas I have for my art. Sometimes I try to analyze what's going on with my art practice through my morning pages. So that's again another safe space for yourself and it's only for you. You can write whatever you feel like writing. It really doesn't matter, but it helps remove certain creative blocks. I don't know how it does that, but it does that for me. So I highly recommend it. The next thing to do is to look at your past work and try to notice similarities and trends. Once you start building up a body of work, either through your sketchbook or commercial work or anything else that you might be doing, it's a good practice every few months to look through your work and try to visually see the direction that it's taking. That is another thing that will give you a lot more confidence and help you understand and define your own style a lot better. You'll definitely notice that you're gravitating towards certain themes or colors or ways of expressing yourself on the paper. So take the time to really analyze that and to see which direction you are naturally going in. The next thing is to learn to trust your intuition and to lean into it. Now, I know that seems like something that's very vague advice, but let me give you an example. So again, going back to the two different paths that I could have taken, one was the Indian ethnic art style and the other was this naturalist art style. There was always something in my brain that told me that the Indian art style might be the right style for me to continue with. 
I felt that it would be something more unique that would help me stand out. And that was like a very analytical part of my brain that was thinking more about what the market would want and where I could potentially stand out. But I needed to learn to trust my intuition and also lean into what my heart felt, which is why I'm so thankful that I gave myself that time to explore both of these parts before deciding on anything. Sure, maybe there's something that the market might like more than something else, or at least it may seem so on paper. But as an artist, things are not that black and white. At the end of the day, what your market is going to accept the most is the thing that comes from deepest within you. You can't create art just because you think somebody is going to like it. It just does not work like that. If you compare a painting that you created just for the purpose of satisfying somebody else versus a painting that you created just because you were so in love with an idea that you just could not stop that painting from coming out of you, that painting is going to be the one that sells. And this is not something that can be really explained, but it just is the way that it is. And after having created my collection, I really strongly feel that way because it just makes me so emotional to even be talking about it. Like it's giving me goosebumps right now. That's how much love that I poured into creating this collection. That's how much love there was behind the story of this collection. And I do think that if I had just created ethnic Indian art because somebody told me that that would sell well, I would not be feeling the same way that I am feeling right now about this collection. So just go with your gut, go with your intuition, go with your emotions and see where it leads you. And then there's acceptance. I mentioned this before, but your art style is something that is constantly evolving. You cannot stop it from evolving even if you wanted to. Two years down the line, I may look at the art that I created today and feel like it's so different from my present self. My life circumstances will have changed. My way of looking at the world will have changed. My technique would have improved and all of those factors contribute into what goes into your art. When you're exposed to new things in life, it informs your art. When somebody tells you something at dinner and it sparks an idea that you never thought about before, that informs your art as well. Where you live informs your art. The people you surround yourself with informs your art. It's everything. Your art is your expression of your present self. So that is going to keep changing because your present self changes every single day. You have to accept that and you have to be okay with that and you have to allow your art to take whatever shape it wants to take. If you try holding on to it, if you try um, sticking with your style as it is currently and you don't allow it to shape the way it wants to shape, you're going to land up in the same situation where you're not painting from the heart. You don't want that to happen. This is a lifelong journey. You're going to never reach a point where your art style is done and that's it. So just be comfortable with that because it's just part of the beauty of being an artist. Be comfortable with it, flow with it, dance with it and just go where it wants you to go. With that, I am so, so happy to announce that my Rain Tree collection, which is my first ever art collection, is now live on my website. It is a celebration of a Rain Tree. You'll read the story on my website, which I really hope you'll check out. And yeah, it 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 is me. <laughs> that collection is everything that I wanted to express. It is my way of paying thanks to the natural world for all the beauty and the wonderment that it has provided me with. And yeah, I'm just so happy to finally have it live. So I hope you will check that out and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.